small, friendly college town of Davidson is a special place for me. It's where I grew up and where I went to college. And even now, when I come back to visit, I feel like I'm at home. I'd like to show you a little bit of it. So come on, let's take a tour. Main Street is stocked with just about anything you would need. Restaurants, shops, bookstores, banks, or ice cream. You can walk most places or find a place to just sit and watch people come and go. A must-see place during your visit is the soda shop, where local folks have gathered for decades. You know you are in a college town when you walk in the door and see the collection of pennants and sports photos all over the walls. It's really like a little museum of Davidson history. At one end of Main Street is Rayford's Barbershop. Don't worry if you don't need a haircut. They will be glad to see you anyway. Man, James, it's good to be back in your chair. It's another place people have gathered to visit with each other. DJ, I started bombing in Davidson back in 57. And when I first started, the haircuts were 75 cents a clip. You know, and we thought that was great. I thought it was way too much. <laughs> Among the shop's widely diverse clientele are all those ROTC students needing haircuts. It's an African-American owned shop, cutting mostly white folks' hair. During the Civil Rights Movement, that made for some bad feelings in the town, some of which are just now melting away. But it's still the friendly gathering place I remember, and just as much a fixture in the town. Tom Clark is a longtime Davidson resident. He was also my professor for a freshman Bible course when I was in school here. And now he's a world famous sculptor of forest gnomes. He's pretty much turned his hobby into a thriving business. One of the risks of knowing Tom Clark is that you might get turned into a gnome. In my college days, Davidson may have been the most Presbyterian village in the world. With a population of a little over a thousand, it had three Presbyterian churches. The Davidson College Presbyterian Church is a connection point between the college and the town. And the college proudly maintains that connection. We're here in the center part of Davidson's campus and behind us is its main building, the Chambers Building. Does it look familiar to you? We'll pull out a nickel and look on the back side and you'll see Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, which was the inspiration for the Chambers Building. The present day Chambers Building was built in 1928 to replace the original one which burned. Leland Park, who knows all about Davidson history, explained that the building was named after a wealthy merchant named Maxwell Chambers. And when he died, he left Davidson a large sum of money, about $300,000, uh, which we always say that uh, had the war gone the other way, da Princeton would be the Davidson of the North rather than Davidson the Princeton of the South. With that money, they used it to build the first Chambers building. It was designed by Alexander Jackson Davis, who was the premier architect in the day. That burned in 1921, and still today, when it's real dry in the summertime, the ghost of Old Chambers reappears, and you can see the four columns dropping back, the portico where the carriages would go under, and the outline of the whole building. A famous Davidson alumnus is Woodrow Wilson, who gave what might have been his first political speech here as a student in 1873-74. 
when he came back in 1917 to visit the college, he did a couple of things. One is go into Old Chambers to see his old dormitory room, and he knocked on the door. The student said, uh, who is it? He said, well, I'm Woodrow Wilson, President of the United States. And he said, well, I'm Napoleon, come on in. And so when he walked in, the student realized who it was and jumped out the window. <laughs> Davidson has been offering a college curriculum and granting degrees since its founding in 1837. There are older institutions, such as UNC Chapel Hill, but like others, it had to shut down after the Civil War. And really, since 1837, March 12th, when we began our classes, we have not closed, and we're the longest continuously running school of higher education in the state of North Carolina. This lovely white columned house on North Main Street is the traditional home of the college president. I grew up right next door during the term of Dr. John R. Cunningham. He kept chickens in his backyard and once recruited me to take care of them while he was away. My payment was all the eggs the hens laid while I cared for them. Imagine my surprise to find there were no eggs. And it was not until years later that I heard why. Everyone else in town knew that when Dr. Cunningham was away, there were free eggs for the taking in his chicken coop. Folks just got there before I did. It's like coming home for me to visit Davidson. I hope you'll visit here for yourself. I know you'll feel right at home too.